that is going to attract so much dust. In this video, I'm going to be doing a Ryzen build. Now, I realized that Ryzen 3000 series is almost upon us, but I've gone back to a 2400G purely for not necessarily a, a big gamer, but a little bit of a gamer. So stick around and check out what this build is, and it's going to be under $400. You know what time it is. Hey guys, Jonathan here with TechWiz Time, where I create technology tutorial and review videos. In this video, I'm particularly going to be doing a Ryzen 2400G build. Now this build, again, I'm going to say it, I know the 3000 is almost upon us, but I wanted to do something that was a little bit low end, just to get me into the groove of making these PC build videos. So that's where we're at with this one. So with saying that, I'll go through the components that I've got. The, the first bit, which I've just peeled off, and you'll probably see a little bit later, is the Cooler Master, Master Box. Cooler Master. Yeah, Cooler Master, Master Box 3.1 with the tempered glass side panel, and it's got the red trim on it. So really, really nice. Actually, just one second, I'll lift it up. Ugh. There we go. That's what he looks like there. Man, this thing is so big, I can't even get it on in the shot. Let me just... Uh, just, uh, there we go, look at that. That's massive. <laughs> awesome. Okay, let's zoom back in. Let's do the, the peel test. Oh, that is gonna attract so much dust. Actually, probably better look on the side. Ooh, that's shiny. And obviously the, the fragile tempered glass there. Very nice. Uh, make sure I don't drop that. Okay, so that's gonna be the case. Now, when it comes to the components that are gonna go inside, I've got da, 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 the Ryzen 5 2400G. Now this is purely for the cores and the threads, so four core, uh, eight thread. Um, and this will play games. So I'll do a little bit of testing just to see what they work out like, but it should be actually pretty good for most Steam games. So that's the Ryzen. Then we've got eight gigabytes of DDR4, 2400 megahertz RAM. Now, this was just purely, I had this around. Uh, if I was to do a build like this normally, I would go dual channel, so two four gig sticks. But again, this is what I had lying around, so. That's the RAM. Next up, we've got a WD Green M2 drive. Now this is the SATA variant, not the NVMe variant. And this is a 240 gig version. Next up, we've got a VS550, which was donated by a family member for my birthday, which was greatly appreciated. So thank you, you know who you are. Um, this one here will be perfect for this build. And the ASRock B450M Pro 4. Now, this one here, the motherboard, I chose this for a couple of reasons. One is because it's got a few USB ports on it, and I know that's gonna be important to the person that's gonna use this computer. And two, it's also got a USB-C port on there. A lot of the B450s didn't have a USB-C port, so when I had a look at all the different ones, this one came out on top because of that reason. So, that's why I've gone with the ASRock B450M Pro 4. Okay, so in saying that, let's uh, let's get all this open and we'll start putting it together. I might do a, a little bit of a time-lapse. What do you think? Cool. Just so you know, I've never actually worked with tempered glass before. So if anything goes wrong, it's not my fault. Like I said, I haven't worked with a tempered glass before, but I'm noticing there's little rubber grommets on the actual glass, which is really cool. I didn't actually know they did that. So that's, yeah, thumbs up, Cooler Master. Now, I just wanted to show you this little tool while, while I'm inside. This little thing here, which I will get closer to, is a little thing that goes on the top of the standoffs. So you can tighten them with ease. How awesome is that? So I thought I'd just slow down the video for a second and just show you on the motherboard here, uh, the B450M Pro 4 from ASRock, you've got an Ultra M2 slot there, 
and a normal M2 slot there. So because this is going to be using the SATA version of the M2 drive, I'm only going to use this one purely because if I do install a graphics card later down the track, then that's going to sit over the top of it and it's going to generate a lot of heat. So I'd rather put it down here considering it's not going to use the bandwidth. So that's just a little tip there. Cool, I'll keep going. Okay, so this is a massive case of read the instructions before you actually go forth. This base plate here that goes underneath for the CPU to attach to the cooler. On the motherboard there were these two little offsets that you need to detach for the 2400G cooler. So I didn't think about that, had it all in the case, dismantled that bit off the board and then the back plate dropped off. So that's why I've got to do it now. like that. Okay, so now it actually works. And then I can do this. Oh, that's heaps better. Look at that. And, ooh, that's gonna be quite close with that sticker RAM, but we'll see. one side than the other. Oh, and if I was really careful, what I would do uh, is put this on the foam. Purely because you don't want any bent pins on the back. So it's been a while since I've done any PC builds. But from what I can feel there, it actually stops once it's tight enough. There we go. And, oh, there's like one mil of clearance there with the RAM. That's awesome. Okay, so I can hook in CPU fan one, like that. There we go. And tidy it up a little bit, make it look a little bit more presentable. All right, so as you might have seen in the time lapse, I've already installed the. Here we go, I'll lift it up. I've already installed the M2, the Western Digital 240 SATA drive. Like I said, I've installed it down there purely because if I do upgrade to an NVMe, then I've got that slot there free. Also, if I do put an external GPU in there, uh, like a GTX 1660, hint, hint, um, then uh, that may uh, stop any overheating issues with an M2 drive installed there because the heatsink's going to be right over the top of it. So I'm just putting it down there just so it can keep a little bit cooler and away from any heavy machinery. So, all right, now that that's, uh, now that that's together, what I'll do is I'll throw it back in the case and keep going. I think all I've got left, actually is the PSU. Yeah, that's cool. Actually, one one thing I did uh, mention it, but I'll mention it again. This little guy here came in the case. Oh, war wound. Um, this little guy came in the case. It attaches to the standoffs over the top of them and allows you to just use a Phillips head screwdriver to tighten them. So I thought that was really cool and that was included. So yeah, that's awesome. Thanks, Cooler Master. Good job. Let's keep going.
Alright, so the PC is built and it's all up and running. I did have a few issues to start with, but that was more HDCP related. Um, the way that I've got my setup, trying to record and all that sort of thing. I'm going through a couple of little switches and didn't like it, but in the end I figured that out. So yeah, it went together really smoothly, which was great. Um, one of the things that I was looking at was the actual real world tests for the Western Digital SSD or the M2 drive I should say. What, <clears throat> if I can get it out, what I found was that the crystal disk mark came back with the results of 524 megabytes per second on the read and 281 megabytes per second on the write. So that, that's where okay, like you're gonna get better speeds out of say a Samsung or something like that. But for, for just a system that's gonna be used for, you know, word processing and so forth, and maybe a little bit of gaming, that's fine. When it comes to copying a file from uh, Synology NAS, as an example, through the gigabit ethernet, excuse me, we're looking at 111 megabytes per second, which was basically saturating the bandwidth there. So. There was, it couldn't go any faster, basically. So that, that was really great. So the network speeds are, are actually really, really good. When it comes to copying that same file, which was a large file, to the same drive, that's where things, it, it slowed down quite a bit. And this has got to do with the, the write speeds and the write capability of the uh, Western Digital M2 drive. So we started out pretty strong, but then as it went along, it dropped to around, uh, on average, about 80 megabytes per second. So it, it's pretty similar speeds actually to a normal platter hard drive, which is your old style three and a half inch hard drive. So yeah, not, not the best, but if you're not writing a lot of information to your drives, then yeah, then it's not that bad, to be honest. And then, yeah, outside of that, with the 2400G CPU in there, uh, well, APU, I should say, um, you're getting pretty good results across the board for most things. And the, the speed, like the, the operating system itself was quite snappy, and I didn't see any slowdowns or anything like that, even with the single channel um, 8 gigabytes of DDR4, it was fine. I haven't gone and run any tests in gaming or anything like that, purely for the reason of, you know, there are so many videos out there that have already been done of all the different type of games that will work with the 2400G. And all everyone cares about on the internet is whether it can run GTA 5, which it can. So yeah, case closed. It doesn't need any more information on that. So it's a system, it runs well, it, is going to be a lot better than the dual core that this is replacing. The old system that this person was running was a dual core, and this basically kicks it kick, kicks its butt all over the place. Yeah, that was my first system build in quite some time, and it was a, a challenge, but it was great. Um, I really hope that I can make some more on this channel. It's something that, you know, the, the, the style that I'm making this video in, I'm, you know, I'm not cutting anything, I'm making mistakes, I, I'm showing that I'm human, I'm not the best presenter in the world, but I'm, I'm not too bad. All I'm worried about is whether or not I could get this system together, which I could, if I could test out and see what the system was actually like, which it was perfectly fine actually. It's something that I could see myself using just as a little, you know, little standby system. It's perfectly fine. Uh, for anyone out there looking for a cheap sub US $400 PC, you know, that's the complete case. Uh, the 2400G is perfect. I would hold off for the moment, purely for the reason that the next, the 3000 series, excuse me, of Ryzen's are uh, almost upon us. They haven't really said much about the, the G series or the APUs at the moment, but we'll probably find out that in the next month or maybe a couple of months time. So if you're not too keen on being up to date, then definitely go for the 2400G. It's a really solid contender. Otherwise, um, yeah, hold out for the 3000 series. One other thing I just want to mention quickly actually is if you're looking at uh, emulation like uh, PS3, CMU, um, PSP or anything like that, 
this system does run great. And if you do want to uh, see any of those sort of software emulation running on the 2400G or even a 2200G, then check out my buddy ETA Prime. His channel is all emulation. So yeah, check him out. He's got some great videos on there. Even a video on the desktop A300. I think that's what it's called. Um, it's an ASRock uh, little all-in-one uh, case with the motherboard and all that sort of thing in, in there. So you just got to drop in your CPU, RAM and CPU, RAM and hard drive. Yeah, so if you drop all that into this little case, uh, it runs really well. So check out his channel and um, yeah. Thanks for watching. If you're new to this channel, make sure you subscribe and like this video. I know this is a little bit different from a lot of the stuff that I've made in the past, but yeah, it's it, it's gonna get there. I'm, I'm getting back into the groove of things and this was a great way to, to get back into it with a system build. So yeah, if you do enjoy this, make sure you subscribe and like this video. Um, leave me a comment on anything you'd like to see in future PC builds. I know I can already see it already that you know you want to see game tests and all that sort of thing. That That's fine. I didn't have a lot of time with this system. So in the future, if I'm looking at the 3000 series, I will definitely be looking at that. Um, yeah, so with all that said, thanks for watching this video and I appreciate all you guys. Imagine, learn and create.